Hey young guys, Steve here from Australian 4x4 Adventures and we're back at another trailer build episode because my new car still isn't here so this is about the only thing I've got to do right now <laughs> so bear with me until the new car finally rocks up uh, Today's episode is episode 4 of the trailer build if you haven't seen the first 3 episodes go back, have a look obviously I, it's basically I've never built anything with metal before and I'm giving it a go, so learning to weld, learning how to just do everything involved with building a camper trailer. Kind, kind of everything, it's more the canopy. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> so, today's episode is going to be something to do with doors. So I've got the doors on, obviously it is all fully painted now all the way around, which is kind of cool. The hinges are all in place. I got the gas struts in. Obviously that's all working nicely there. I like it, I really like that actually. Um, like in episode three, obviously I've done one off camera, <laughs> off, off cam camera, off camera so I can actually, you know, make sure I'm doing it and not making a fool of myself. Uh, and it all worked out nicely, exactly the way I was thinking it. So there's no epic fails involved in any of that stuff. Um, so what I'll do for this episode is show you how I've mounted it all, um, all the gas struts, how to do all that. Obviously you would've noticed I've got a floor in there as well. Um, that is just temporarily sitting in there. It's got to come out still, do a few more bits and bobs underneath with the water tanks and all the rest of it. Get all that sort of side of it going and then I'll fix that down. And then the joinery side of it starts on top. That's when it gets expensive. <laughs> so I know a few, I'm gonna address this from the very start. A few of you are going to go, oh, you're going to hit your head on that. Like, yes, currently I will. Um, I could have had it angled further up. I didn't want it further up because it meant all the water would have drained back down towards the, the uh, trailer. This way it's just down, so water will drain away from the trailer. Height-wise, I've still got the standard cheese cutter tyres on there. Once I get the proper tyres on there, it's going to go up about another two or three inches, which will be above my head height. So, not a drama at all. Uh, right, let's uh, figure out how to mount these doors. I'll show you. So, so, it's to do with like drilling and tapping and stuff. I've, I've never drilled and tapped a thread, threaded hole. Um, I've had the kit for ages, I've just never had to do it. You know, I just, I, literally it was an LD kit that I, that I found and when it was on the special buys. I'm like, oh, that could be handy one day. Like 10 years later, finally found a use for it. Um, so I know, I know that might be super basic to some of you guys, but to others, you may have never done it. And it's too daunting. So I'll spend a little bit of time just showing how all that works. And we'll also do the cladding in this video as well, which is arriving tomorrow technically, but I might not get to actually do it for another week maybe, but, but for the video, it'll all happen like that. So, let's get into it. First things first is I've got to do the hinge on top. This one's relatively simple because it's basically just a giant piano hinge. You pretty much just measure it. 11.48. We'll go with 11.48. I'll go cut it, and then that's the hinge pretty much done. Actually kind of easy. Thank you. 
so I'm just probably going to put two in, so it's like a locator. Um, then I'll take it off again, mount the hinge to the frame. The reason I put the two in first is because when I'm trying to hold it up by myself, because I'm doing this all by myself, it's easier for me to prop the side up, put those two screws in there and it's stable, then I can go through and do the rest of them, making sure it's all lined up and straight while it's in place. Uh, I will screw this hinge off to the, to the frame properly before it goes up, just so it's Mickey Mouse. But the rest of these, because I've, I've got to take them off again, I'll do it once the door's up there. That's just as easy. So as you can see there, the frame would go on that part, folds under, job done. It's been nice, it's a nice hinge. Alright, so door frame, it's in nicely, got our loud gap up the top there, plus some. Perfect, we're going to go that way. Go down extrusion. So that's the way it was mounted up there, which means that goes straight on there, like such. You can pretty much just center it and screw it on. Really not rocket science. So I'm using a big, fat, wide, flat head on, on the screws, which helps support it. Um, I have seen some people do like a full aluminium strip the entire length and use that as a giant washer the whole way through. Um, these doors aren't massive or super heavy, so I don't think that's necessary. Having said that, if these pull out in time, that's probably why I'm going to fix it, if, if that's something I have to do. Use my head for something, apparently. Right, that can hold that. Then this is where we get some screws in. And we're sweet. She opens and closes. Oh, I bought one. Nice. Nice and neat, tidy, easy. Happy days. Alright. So I'll go through, screw the rest of those, um, the top hinge off. And then we can start getting onto the gas struts. All right, so the gas struts, so these are just from Bunnings. They're about 15 bucks each, I think it was. Uh, so they're a 535 mil long, 200 Newton meter. Um, I think it's Newton meters. N, I think it's there for Newton meters. Uh, gas strut, super simple, nothing hard about it. I was gonna do some sort of like screw on fitting to, to hold the, um, the end of it. Um, I changed my mind the way through it. So I'm actually gonna drill and tap in that fitting there, if it ever focuses on it, it won't, into both the frame and the door. So it's just one less thing that can come loose over time. Um, measurement wise, all I'd done for the first one was basically work out from there to there. I, just, I, I looked up a chart basically, and it was 170 mil for my first point from there held the door where I wanted it, and then just marked on there, and that's how I got my second point, which I have to double check the measurement, because it was a couple days ago I've done that now. It's like 6.20 or something like that. And then done that both sides, and it, it was Mickey Mouse. 
There is a little bit of adjustment in these in and out. So if you get it wrong ever so slightly, that, that end fitting does screw in and out around about six or seven mil. Gives you a little bit of tolerance, both top and bottom. So there's a little bit of tolerance built into it. But either way, I'll mark up these doors, start drawing some holes and we'll get these struts on. It's got all those four marks done, two up in the door, two down on the frame. Just a small drill bit to start with, do my little pilot hole, and then we can start expanding the holes. So, I like to sort of go up slowly-ish, so you're not sort of putting too much pressure on each drill bit as you go through. Uh, also, just because I can, a little bit of a chain lube for bikes. I'm just sort of putting that on the drill bit. Oh, I it's helping, but I'm trying to uh, preserve the drill bits as long as I can. I've just been doing it in a drill, I don't know if I'm meant to or not, but it's working, so I'm gonna keep doing it that way. Same thing, oil on there. This one you really don't want getting hot. It's kind of the expensive part, not really. So I've been putting just a fair bit of pressure into it and just super slow. Got it, cut its way in. You know when it's in because it will just sort of release the pressure. Just wind in a bit and then reverse it out gently. Job done. Oh, so once that's done, you grab your, uh, your strut. You, you can take the end bits off, screw them in separately, but I'm not. I'm just screwing them straight in. Fits in nicely. Yeah, it's just such a neater look not having extra brake to worry about. Yeah, this is the part that stuck a little bit. Just kind of got to lower it down to where it's not under pressure or height, it just goes in. This is where probably taking it off the end would help. But shh. Cool time actually, so I like that. I'm gonna turn this music down. Um, I currently have four doors at least, so I've just got vice grips holding them in because they sort of want to pop open. But essentially, all four doors are now on, which I'm excited about. So I want to see what it looks like with all of them up. Make sure that they're relatively close. Get this by door. Oh, this is it, but I just, seriously, look at that. It's like, I'll just, I'll just do that, it's fine. I think I'm gonna, this, one, this one needs adjusting, that one needs adjusting. <laughs> That's gonna drive me nuts if they don't line up. Yeah, this one. Get out of the way. Wow. And the last one. Get out of the way. And same with that one. That just needs a slight bit of adjustment as well. So <laughs> clearly my measurements were just a frag out. Um, it's probably the text, text, text of thickness maybe. Cause that's, I, I can get, I know I can get that 100%. I 
I can get that right. I'm gonna change it. Um, I did stuff up one of the taps though. So anyone who's got a little bit more experience with this sort of thing, because I, I don't know how to fix it. This one here is, is all clapped out, you know? It's like it's, I, I slip with the, with the die and it's, doesn't want to hold. I tried putting some Teflon around the thread. Maybe I thought maybe that would sort of help expand it. It didn't happen. Uh, um, do I have to like re-weld it and re-drill it and re-tap it? Um, I don't know, can you go, someone who knows, can you chuck it down in the comments down below? How do I fix that? <laughs> Cause that's gonna upset me if that's the only one. And everything else is tight as, it's all, it's all sweet. It's just that one doesn't want to work for me, which is frustrating at the best of times, I reckon. So it's kind of cool, I like it. It's like a little bat wing thing. Have a look at this. This is exactly what I envisioned for it. All right, if I hold it up there, that's exactly what I envisage for this. Basically just four big giant doors, open it up, get into what you want. You got kitchen for one, pantry in the other, um, main utilities in this one, and then just storage in the back. It's perfect for what I want. So I actually had someone message me on Insta because I put up a, a progress photo of the trailer. So if you don't follow me on Insta or Facebook, jump, jump across on there because it's slightly more updated than YouTube in the sense of it's a bit more real time. Anyway, so what he was saying was um, apparently all these struts are upside down. I didn't realize there was a right way up or not. He goes, if it's that way, it'll lose pressure quicker than if it's that way. I don't know. Can't find any literature on it. I'm not saying it's wrong, clearly because I'm doing it. <laughs> um, but I don't know, just, if you know if this is the correct way or the other way is the correct way or it doesn't matter, maybe um, shoot me a message down in the comments and I'll see if there's anything to what he said. That's all of them. By this stage, I'm freaking happy because I, I can see the structure now, I can see the size, I can see the scope of everything. So I've got the, the roof sort of sitting in place at the moment, it's not glued on, it's just sitting there. Um, so it gives you a, a good idea of sort of the height. I know I keep ducking underneath these things, but these are still the small tires. It's gonna go up in another three inches when the bigger tires go on, which is gonna clear my head height. I know it's, a, it's still gonna be close, but I want a minimum because I didn't want to go any taller than I had to. Because by the time I put the rooftop tent on, it's going to be pretty tall as it is already. So, I like it. All right, maybe let's look at some, let's look at some cladding. Okay, so the product I ended up going with was a, Lu a Lucabon. So it's not a sheet metal. It is, but it isn't. Um, it's not a polycarbonate. It's, it's both. So it's a polycarbonate internal with a 0.6 um, sheet metal on both sides to give it some strength. Makes it super light. This is probably about three and a half kilo for this whole panel. 
makes it good for, for exactly my application here. Um, you can get it different colours, you can get it in blacks and whites. Obviously this side here is going to be a gloss black, which is I think what I'm going to end up using. Up because I'm going to put stickers and stuff over it, so the black's going to help the stickers pop. Um, on the other side is more like a, a satin white, and that's, sort of, that's going to be the inside and it's going to be nice and clean. Um, probably have a little, little whiteboard actually if I wanted to, just a little uh, whiteboard marker. Might try that. <laughs> so with this stuff, it should be as easy as, once I glue it all, sit it on up there, sit it where I need it to sit, get it centered left to right, all the rest of the stuff, because I've, I've overhung the panels past the doors, so it can lap on to the edge of the, um, the camp here. Reason being, I'm trying to find it now, reason being is because I got this little rubber tubing that goes around the outside, and that's gonna act like a second seal onto the actual face of, of this here, which is technically more flashing because I've got flashing coming up the side as well to where the panel comes across. Um, so that's partly why it overhangs as well because that means that can fit on there and still, still work. That's the idea of it. Super excited about getting some panels on, like so excited. Well, that went surprisingly swimmingly. <coughs> uh, because I'm on my own is the reason I didn't take the whole sheet off, glue the roof and then put it back up again. I wouldn't have been able to get the sheet up there by myself without smearing the glue everywhere. So had the sheet up there, glued the front half, set it down, clamped it so I couldn't slide anymore, picked the back half up, glued the rest of it, put that down. And then I've gone around and I've, I've pressed everything down until the, until the glue's sort of squeezing out. And this, that sheet's got a, a little bit of weight to it, so it is staying there. But I will double check it. If I've got some spare clamps tonight, I'll chuck them up there. That was actually easier than I thought, which is nice. Let's uh, move on to some doors. All right, so I actually probably should put this sheet up first and maybe mark where it was gonna go. But I forgot, so we're just gonna suck and see as we go this one. And unlike the rest of the series so far, I did now actually do one off camera to make sure I knew what I was doing first. Can't forget glue all over me. On my merch! Don't have a website. If you want some though, shoot me a message on Instagram and I can organize for you. So what I should have done on the first one, which I didn't, I'm learning as we go here, um, put it in place, line it up the way I wanted it to fit on the door, and just put a couple of tiny marks, probably do it on the inside here, yeah? just so I know where things are meant to line up. And these can actually be rubbed off later if, if they really need to be. But it's just a point of reference, so when I'm holding the panel up, I can get it 98% right, and then I can tweak it from that point. So, that's what I'm doing. Perfect. Good morning. 
Here's my one. Ah, oh, it's me guy. That was awesome. I managed to like, sit it on top of the seal and then line up the lines and then drag it back a bit and sit. <laughs> Learning as I go. So I decided to do something really stupid and I blew this up already and I'm by myself. <laughs> so I got kind of a, kind of a plan. This, this is going to act like a little bit, bit of a, a shelf. I can get it up there, put a clamp on each side, and then I can sort of adjust it and then clamp it off in position. <laughs> oh man. No, I shouldn't be doing this. I really shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> Relatively painless. Yeah. It's all pretty good there, it's flush across the top. Yeah, flashy flash. Yeah. No way of clamping the top edge here. But there is flashing to go around over this as well, so it gets another bond to hold both together. One more thing I'm doing for dust prevention is all of these sit sections here, obviously that's gonna get a demold seal basically put on top of that, which the door closes down onto and seals that up there. On the outside of that though, dust could still get into this point here, and this extra bit of metal is only uh, sort of stitched weld on, welded on to the frame metal. So there's technically a gap in between those two bits there. So while I've got the glue gun out, it's, this is a sealant as well as a, um, it's obviously a glue, so you can use it for both. I'm just gonna run a bead of, bead of silicon around the entire perimeter there on those joins, just to sort of help stop any dust getting in there down the track, because obviously you go through bull dust and stuff, that's super fine, it'll find its way in anywhere, no matter how many seals it's got, it'll try and find its way in. So the more dust prevention and water um, ingress prevention I can do now, the better off everything's gonna be down, down the track. So in addition to doing all the, the vertical sections, that obviously for the door seals, keep in mind that the trailer down below is pretty much just a standard box trailer. There's, I haven't done anything to it to help sealing or anything else. The front tailgate's still gotta fold down because that's the access to the water tank and pump and everything else if something goes wrong. Back tailgate's gonna fold down because that's extra storage underneath. So the trailer itself is gonna get dusty inside. I know that, I'm not doing anything about that. It doesn't bother me because the stuff I'm going to store in there or carry in there is chairs in bags or awnings and stuff that if it gets dusty, who cares? Just brush it off and you're, and you're good. Um, because the inside of that trailer is going to get dusty, it means obviously any, any dust can come up as well through the floor. So where I put this flooring in, actually going through, and sorry about the lighting, going through and sealed up the junction between the timber and the steel. The, for the entire perimeter, the whole way around. And once I do this back panel, obviously that'll get done as well. So, 
I'm trying to do everything I can to try and minimise the amount of dust that goes inside there because I understand that I don't have like double, triple seal, um, some fancy thing that someone like Boss Aluminium or Patriot or one of those big companies will do because they've got big folding machines and engineering and CAD and all the rest of the stuff that they've designed it with. I'm just little old me, making it up as I go. So, silicon is my friend, <laughs> pretty much. And I'm trying to just do everything I can to minimise it. I'm not expecting this to be completely dust free. I'll be, it'd be cool if it is, but I'm not expecting it.